The Effenrad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Vans. Before I start the show this week, I just want to put a call out to our listeners around the world that Wired Snowboards is looking for international distributors in several key markets. Please reach out to Rob at WiredSnowboards.com if you think you'd be a good fit. Season 7 of F and Rad is sponsored by Wired Snowboards, The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, Anon Optics, Time Bomb Trading, the Canadian distributor of Stance Socks, Rumpel High Performance Blankets, and much, much more, and Tribute Board Shop in Nelson, B.C. Stance Socks offer a feel-good fit that's a little more fun. Their latest collection of spring casuals offers an eclectic alternative to the everyday mundane with a fresh mix of color and creativity that lets you be you. Let Stance put a little extra pep in your step with a kaleidoscope of styles that are anything but boring. Stance's infinite technology creates socks they can guarantee for life. Their Field 360 exclusive fiber treatment reacts to your body's temperature and eliminates odor-causing bacteria as it wicks away moisture to keep you feeling fresh and dry. Plus, you can express yourself with one of Stance's many collabs with some of your favorite things like Star Wars, Beavis and Butthead, and so much more. Go to stance.com to check out all of the goodness. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, New Green Superfood Drink, Volcom Outerwear, and Intuition Heat Moldable Liners for boots. Thanks to everybody who supports the show. Jeremy Jones became one of the most famous snowboarding pros filming video parts with Mac Dog. He joined the original Forum 8. Then he was riding and filming for Burton. And now he's riding for Nitro and running a physical training facility called The Sect in Salt Lake City, where he helps out the current generation of pros with his 30-plus years of experience in the game. Jeremy is often referred to as Freestyle, Jibber, or Utah Jeremy Jones because there have been two pro snowboarder Jeremy Joneses for a very long time. 20-plus year careers on on both the Jeremy Joneses. It's kind (laughs) of, you know, and and we've traded off, I guess... uh, you know, through the years, it's, it's, I guess, gone up and down, like who's hot, who's, who's headlining. Uh, yeah. Who's right, headlining. Right, right. That's the way to put it. Right, yeah. right. 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 So it's, it's fun. You know, it, it's, it's like always... when Ozzy and Motley crew were, <laughs> yeah, sure. were touring some days, Ozzy would headline some days, Motley crew would headline. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun, dude. Well, that's... it's, yeah, it's, I think we've, you know, for whatever and right or wrong over the years, we've probably both for sure helped each other out. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, as much as you, if we're that one, like, super rider yeah sure <laughs> and someone like looks at that and yeah you know back then one day they were buying rosignals and the next day they were buying a forum or a burton and then now they're buying a jones split board it's like if they think we're the same person the whole time that doesn't what you matter should do. you should do jones snowboards oh my god i hit him so up about that no no i just mean you have your own jones, my own jones. so that you just continue this jeremy jones <laughs> thing where the there's street two- jones <laughs> <laughs> will be the freestyle jones board company <laughs> that would be super sick actually yeah no i mean i there's room for it and there's room to do it with that kind of humor too and, yeah yeah and both be on the same side i think in snowboarding now so that's that's yeah. at least cool you know it's yeah. not not a war anymore more. Yeah, see that's here's the thing. If the if there's a lesson of this season for me cuz I started with like the first interview I did was Donna and that was back in the summer. And I you know, I've always been on the rider side of things. Mm-hmm. I've always kind of been pushing against the Donnas of the world saying like, "Oh god, you guys don't get it." And they're pushing back saying, "You guys don't get it. This isn't just like throw caution to the wind Mm -hmm. we'll all be out of a job if you don't listen to the bean counters on this other side like there's there's certain stuff yeah no there's a you know part of you know i look at where i'm at now and this is just jumping to now really yeah like you you know sitting on this almost three decades of a snowboard career and then a little bit of a corporate role to get kind of some structure and business and everything and then look at it now. And that's, that's really what it is. It's like, I can, I can go do my thing somewhere else. I can practice my skills outside of snowboarding, maybe make more money doing that somewhere or kind of come back to snowboarding, practice the skills I've learned, um, or not even come back, but stay in snowboarding and contribute that way. Like if you had something 
with the, with the experience of someone that's been in it. And then now they're the ones laying the platform to listen to the kids coming in. Oh, that's, you know, and to, I listened to, I'm, you know, if I'm through parts of, of your, um, of Donna's cast and, you know, she spoke to that about Jake, just back to the writers. And I look at, and that's really, that's all I've ever been about. It's been about, um, writer and I never knew it. Forum was like that. Going to Burton was totally like that. And it was so that those were fun years because Burton wasn't perceived as that. And you listen to Donna talk about Jake's vision of listening to the writers, bringing them to the round tables. And he did that. He did that. He listened to everyone. He did ride the product, all of it. Yeah. You know, like that's nice. room, rooms full of every single piece and to move through that kind of, I mean, <laughs> dude, there's so many skews like to insane. move through all that yeah. in a yeah. season even is insane. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, that's dope dedication. And then that's also his, his version of trying on the writer. Cause he knows, he knows what input from who went to what, you know? Mm-hmm. And he didn't always agree and he let it happen. He let that thing happen. And, and hearing that about Craig and, and kind of where that spark to listen to that came from, I had never heard that before. That was really cool. And it just put a new perspective on, um, my experience there because, because right. me and Jake weren't super tight. We didn't, we got along just fine. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I was, uh, in those years, a little more of a political voice and it was, you know, baby rattlesnake style, like didn't know how to control my venom a bit and a little bit ignorant to what the venom can do, you know? So saying things that were polarizing for the sake of saying polarizing things, Jake didn't agree with all of them, but we never had beef about it always like, let me do the thing, even to the point of board graphics, you know, where, you know, the politics were out of that, but teasing Burton for being a corporate company, right? That's the voice of snowboarding. Like, right. Yeah. You guys do an ink first year, sell 30,000 year two, sell 20,000 year three, want to bury it. Cause you're, and so then I'm like, I'm incorporated Burton's trying to stuff me. So I play this, I throw this joke back at Burton right. on my own board graphic right. that right. Burton's producing <laughs> and creating the marketing message behind. Yeah. And he runs that like he, I mean, that's pretty rad, dude. Yes. You know, like yes. he's supporting, um, my fans, mm-hmm. the people that support me. That's amazing. And he did, and he did that across the board. So to, to see where that came from was pretty Pretty rad. Yeah. I think, I think, I think I do this thing where I project my internal knowledge onto everyone, right? Like I learned about Craig's importance Mm. at Burton and I think, oh, well, everybody knew that already, but, um, you're really getting to the heart of it, which is there's no Mr. Forum. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't like a guy Mm. who was calling the shots. There was no Mr. Burton. Like there wasn't a guy, he wasn't able to even maybe not even know the nuances around your board graphic. He just looked at it and goes, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. But if somebody said to him, Hey, he's kind of taking the piss out of you. He'd be like, yeah, good. Okay. Like the, Burton's always been on the, the target of the cool kids. Yeah. Like they must've been very frustrated that they couldn't make something like the Burton seven thing last or on ink like that must have just pissed them off that like yeah. how come no yeah. how come nobody wants to see Burton as this core company that has been in snowboarding forever that's been at the top of their game and that supports like some of the best riders in the world like how yeah. how come we're stuck being this kind of corporate weird thing yeah i don't i don't know you just get i mean kids are kids you know they start mm. picking up on they're testing things too. You know, they get caught in, you know, I see my kid now she's 17 and she's, or she has to take on kind of the polarizing issues that the world presents her now, 
like now is the time that she has to start trying it on. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's all snowboarding is. You bring these kids in, um, you show them something that, man, it's, I don't know what else you get to go hop on a team and like cruise the streets of Minnesota and get some crazy street experience, filming experience or hop on a plane. Next thing you know, when you're 12 and you're lining up for the Olympics and you're like at this 22 foot pipe on the top of some glacier in the middle of Europe and you're 12 years old, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, it's unreal. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it with skateboarding, the young protégés, and mm-hmm. then blowing up into the Danny ways of the universe, yeah. you know? Yeah. And Sean White, the whole Sean White thing. Like, snowboarding's got this whole gamut of experiences, but it really kind of boils down to that, that thing that hooks you in the beginning. Like, where were you when you started? Here in Utah? Yeah, here in uh, Farmington, Utah. Yeah. Just uh, my neighborhood. I I grew up skateboarding, so it was just kind of a means to deal with the cold. And totally, I can't. I don't really remember how I came up with the snowboard idea, but it was just a skate. Yeah, flipped the skateboard, took the trucks <laughs> off. Yeah, did uh, stirrup straps with a tire tube, and yeah, we would just bomb this goalie, and then I got like a black snow edge, and <laughs> and it just kind of hooked, you know. And it, I was. I was uh, good at it, I guess, to the point of at least to keep going, you know, like yeah. the passion hooked in and it drew me in and it was a experience with my friends, I think more than anything. And they, they were all kind of giving it the same energy. <clears throat> and so it just came up that way. Like, I don't think it would have, I don't even know if it would have happened if it wasn't with the friends, you know? Yeah. I, I think I really don't. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, I had a black snow edge too. Same, same deal. And even at that point, it was like, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm excited for when it snows because we're going to go and, and, you know, snowboard all over the place yeah. look for little things to hit, but like tiny stuff. Like, Tin- a, yeah. Yeah. Like a golf course size. And that yeah. I'm like back to that now. And that's, I don't think I realized until, I mean, I had a thing just a month ago when we got our first snow here and the way that I got drawn up there to, to go snowboard, I was, I was by myself. And then I kept repeating that for a few weeks. Like I would leave here in my office at like five in the afternoon and drive up there and just get the last hour and dig out my spot, put the rail up and this season taught me that I, I'm like, oh, okay, now, now I, I actually love snowboarding because I'm, I'm doing it by myself because I want to, I'm mm-hmm. doing it. Cause this is pulling at me. I don't have friends up here. This is just my mission. And, and it feels good. It feels good to hit this steel. And, and so when I, you know, that question was always there, like, what's your f- favorite thing in snowboarding like a powder turn or is it riding a rail or what's your favorite trick and I always I never could answer it because it was the experience with my friends that pulled me now I think I could maybe answer it you know and it's because I do I'm like yeah I know I know the feeling the feeling of getting pulled for a solo solo mission you know yeah yeah so it was cool cool to know that after 30 years I'm I love snowboarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For people that haven't been a pro, a pro rider, um, I don't think you're going to get to an experience where snowboarding something that's like a job, you know what I mean? Everybody can understand that. Mm-hmm. Like even the most passionate, you know, worker has times where they realize, Oh my God, this is just a job now. You yeah. know, it's not exciting. I'm a real first gear guy. Like, wow, we're going to do this cool thing, this cool thing. And then you look and you go, oh man, it's a lot of work, you know? Yeah. It's a lot of work to get there. No, it is. It's a grind. When was your very first, uh, sponsorship thing? Like, did you do some sort of USASA series or traveling around? No, I didn't do any of that. I, I moved straight into filming really. So it was just uh local stuff here. Um, Ben Pruce actually, 
I met him. He was part of, you know, some East coast racing stuff. That's actually how I met Jeremy Jones. It was all in the same two years pretty much. Yeah. So I met Ben Pruce. Um, I was sort of riding for this company called Yama. It was maybe out of Idaho. It was just some random thing. Wow. I just got a board, yeah. you know, and it was a sick board, but <laughs> so I had, I think I got two boards, not really sponsored, but called it that. And then, uh, then Ben Pruce came the next year. I was living with his, an old college roommate of his cool. that moved out to do more school Fritz. And so met Ben, Ben plugged me in and then revelation snowboards started up in Surrey, Canada. So yeah, yeah. that was kind of my first in Ben, Ben plugged it in. And then at the same time we had shot with JC Brady. So Brady films here in salt Lake, they were making some 16 mil snowboard films. We got in on those. That was kind of our plug whitey um and kingpin and dogger mdp at the same time sort of started looking at utah as like places to go so the same time their eyes were looking at us was when we had this sort of video breakout me and jp both really in these early films tim Tim osler mitch nelson a few other you know that's we were in these brady films and So they got glimpses of that. They started asking around and, you know, a lot of people were talking about JP mostly. And so, um, yeah, Whitey came to town and we, we were riding the film industry, ditched him on the first day. We like, (laughs) dude, it was so much snow. We show up (laughs) and we're like riding up the lift and they had lagged a little bit. And, um, Mikey was kind of curating the meetup LeBlanc. Yeah. And we're like, dude, it's powder and these dudes are lagging. Like we're watching chairs just go, you know, and we don't know a filming protocol yet. We're just, we're chomping. Like we're chompers. If it's like, it's good, it's good. You know, that's our phase. Totally. (laughs) So hop on the lift. We're halfway up it. And those dudes got on, I don't know, maybe 10 chairs behind and it was kind of over this roll and it was this, the highest point of this, the crest chair at Brighton. And, but it was so much snow. We were able to just jump. We just jumped. We're like, dude, we're jumping. We're out. We're got, we got to go ride. So we just like bodied off of these lifts yeah, and then just dipped into the trees (laughs) and split the whole day. So ditched the full whitey session. Like, and that, I mean, I look at it now and it's so cool because snowboarding took over like that snowboarding took over. We were, right. we always looked at it as, Oh man, sorry. Like we were being dicks and not paying respect. And there's a level of that too. But at the same time, like, I don't know, you kind of came into our space and asked to be a part of our day and you were late and we were just like, dude, we kind of want to go. Yeah. We weren't in it yet. We didn't know, you know, that'd be a different story. And, so I don't know. No, it's a good story. It's it's, it's a little punk rock too. I, I, I mean, that's snowboarding. You yeah, know? I asked I asked Johan about his reputation as someone who was hard to shoot with, and he, he was kind of like, "What? No, those guys were hard to shoot with. Like you're not at the top of a run, just sitting there getting freezing cold. There's like a moment when you're ready to go. Yeah, and that moment you can't manufacture that moment. You can't. It's either that you've got your camera with the film in it and point it at me or you don't but totally i don't have that that's not a driving force but behind the shit that i'm doing here yeah and that that communication wasn't there a lot between filmer and writer and it took there are a few crews that would do that you know we started open up that dialogue with dogger and and whitey too and kearns especially like we're super open with kearns that plan was super clear yeah here's our relationship like um, you know, we're not messing around, so I'm going to not mess up and you're going to not mess up. And it right. was intense, you know, and it would, but it was, that was the sickest thing ever. It yeah. was just good because you were on. And when you messed up, it was a mess up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you just kept going. That's a tight crew. Hey, yeah, it was good. It was, yeah, it was a tight crew. Let's keep coming back to the same thing because that's exactly what you're talking about with like a snowboarder running 
a company that mm-hmm. needs the bean counter stuff. Yeah. And you relegate the, the guy w- who's doing the money thing. It's like, okay, you do your job. We're going to do our job here. Yeah. And so Kearns was that. He was the insulator. He, he was the first filmer that had filmed, you know what I mean? That had been at a competition level of snowboarding. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. It, yeah. So, so, and once he got there, he, he was like, he had that ability to say to you guys, Hey, don't, don't do something lame. I'm, I'm, uh, don't make me come up there and do this. Yeah, yeah. It's too small. Yeah. Like go do something that's impressive mm-hmm. because if I can do it, if I'm thinking about doing it, you guys are fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not even that, you'd just be like, dude, I'll come do it. Yeah. Like, I, and I won't, I won't survive this, but I will. <laughs> I, that, I mean, that came out of his mouth a few times. <laughs> I will not survive this, but I will come and do it. Yeah. That, that I'm not afraid of, Mm. you know, and just that, that notion was, I responded to it. Well, you know, I, some people broke and yeah, I'm sure recovered now, hopefully, but it's yeah. Yeah. Those days were good for sure. Yeah. A lot to learn. Yeah. Let's talk about that team because that, that was, I mean, having talked about it a lot off mic and, and with buddies and, it's like the most expensive team in history of snowboarding. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it wasn't that big, you know, if Burton even paying, you know, Burton was paying more for their team. I think as a whole, mm. I guess maybe individually, maybe, but I don't know. I know what I was getting paid there and those, yeah. that wasn't my heyday of money. It wasn't the forum days for sure. Oh, maybe, maybe the heyday of experience. Yeah. And like kind of that Hollywood just intensity, yeah. I guess, of fame sort of when you show up places and people were crying and, <laughs> you know, it was, I mean, that was wild. And, but yeah, that was, you know, for some, some were getting paid really good in those contracts. Others were just okay. You know, but oh, it was okay. the deal you made, you know? Yeah. 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 But yeah. I, I would say the expense was more definitely the most expensive team marketed yeah i think that's that probably level. that's probably what i'm talking about yeah too. probably and even okay when we're talking about the snowboarding being in it like so forum seemed like an amazing partnership of dogger and raw going like okay like like we can market this it's a marketing genius mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. but then you guys weren't riding on the production boards i remember being like mm. Like these boards aren't that great, especially the very first ones were real junk. Even we were riding on worse boards than the production <laughs> for sure. Oh, no. Oh yeah. The, those were, they were the worst. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think Devin was riding still maybe option made stuff. I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. Yeah. No, they would just, they would just blow up. I mean, the first run of boards we, the code name of them were T minus T minus because that's what it was. Like if you strapped in and you were like gravity was starting to feed you. Yeah. It was T minus like you didn't know what was going to pop. Oh no. I mean, base bases would just peel up and, and the timing of them was insane. That was the craziest part. It was consistently timed to the worst moment that that thing could go wrong, like in the runway or the landing or whatever. (laughs) Oh. oh yeah it was it was yeah t minus so no they were not good production yeah you should be thankful you were on a production one really yeah oh yeah and those weren't even that great Mm-mm. i went and rode my first pro model a few years back for a little real snow intro at yeah. the rail gardens yeah and i dropped in on it the first like little drop just to see what it felt like fully fell like high-sided it, the thing was like a two by four. Oh, wow. I couldn't even, I couldn't believe I filmed a video part on that board and I was like, dude, this is on, this thing doesn't work at all. Who was I talking to? Uh, Lance Pittman, I think, cause mm. he became the K2 clicker guy. Oh, right. And he was like, oh fuck. Why, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> yeah. It's not working and it's difficult, right? Like, so yeah. you're the first person to talk about this. Cause I asked Peter line about the board's board quality and he was like he could make it work yeah he never he was that person we always tripped on him he didn't 
he didn't fix lips. He didn't, Mm. he could ride anything. Mm. You know, he was like four and a half pounds (laughs) and could just, you know, pull the thing around. Yeah, he could. He could write anything. Nothing mattered. So was it, were you allowed to talk about the board sucking when you guys were together? Like, or was that? Yeah. I mean, it was always, yeah, we were always like, dude, how do we get this things good? And then, and they got better, you know, they, yeah, we got into some better factories and, um, and they worked out, Yeah, but they still, they were good enough for, to like compete on an average level. Yeah. But the, you know, until until we introduced the the slider from Rev, then we didn't really have anything on technology. Yeah, and then even still, it was just a mounting system, not like performance. On yeah, the would board. you would you ride the sliders like you and JP ride the sliders? Yeah, I mean that yeah. was my that was kind of my initiative. I brought those things, you know, from Rev to Forum, and then from Forum to Burton. I yeah. was I did the first test, like late release Pro model at Burton to introduce that and took the risk on that. And they did the single track one. They did the single track. Um, we played with both, but ended on the single and it was like the one on mine was like a little short track. So yeah. you could still run the two hole, you know, it was before, oh, we, yeah, I remember before we started doing the EST bindings, which was, you know, again, just messaging that I wanted from, I wanted a baseless binding from, cause that's kind of how I grew up on bindings, homemade baseless bindings. And so wow. I was kind of chasing that. So the EST was formed. It was a good system with the track and, but yeah, that was kind of my, I took the risk and then they went across the whole, the whole line over, I think it was like three or four years. And then who were, did the engineering on the, on the track stuff? Um, I don't know ultimately, but I mean, the people I work with are like JG and Chris Doyle and those, you know, they were the ones that, that this all ultimately kind of the, where the craziness kind of gets accepted, you yeah. know, and they'll try it. And then me and Doyle worked on the toe cap a lot, you know, we were using hockey helmet chin things. And so <laughs> he, he was always down to just listen. He did the spinner binding for me. He was just, he yeah. was all about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, I was talking with Trent Bush, I think. So he was mm, doing, yeah. Tech nine, I think tech nine may have had the first toe cap stuff. It was the same year. That was a little bit of a debate, like controversial of who was me or Mark Frank. Really? Who did it? Who came (laughs) up with it first? (laughs) But you know, really it was. Oh, so it came out of Utah. That's the thing is that you guys wanted something that just looked cleaner, pulled your boot back. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, I didn't even know he was up to it. I don't know that he knew I was up to it. That's so bizarre. We just sort of, of yeah, yeah. 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 And then the messaging in the industry became this little who did it first, which was fine. Just let it ride. And there's but a, now it's whatever. There's a lot of that. Yeah. There, I mean, it's important. There's, it, it is. There's a lot of that. Who did it first stuff like Jake, Tom on mm-hmm. that Jeff Grell, Louis Forno on the bindings. And I mean, we always have some new thing coming out and that, yeah. And both side and, if there's multiple sides to it, producing the thing and everyone's paying attention, you're sort of all gonna, if you're already there yeah. in that development space, yeah, you're kind of going to go the same way because you're experiencing the same holdbacks because the level rises. Yeah. You're watching talent or you are the talent. Yeah. And then you're crossing that, those skills and, to the experience on is the product holding up. Right. 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 And then the development process happens and you know, I don't know, it's dope cycle really. (laughs) Yeah. 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 But I don't even know where we've landed on bindings. Is it something like what those unions are? Um, or those those are are nitros. nitros. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're all over. You have like what I ride now is, I mean, that's like the team binding. So that, I would say that's a, that's your normal kind of your basic. So then you could binding, use the right? toe strap like over the top of the yeah, boot. Yeah, so the toe strap. Yeah, and a, some will do. As a, as a lot a of people thing. aren't really running the toe cap anymore. Right. In terms of trends, I think. Right. It's more of just the old strap, so it looks a lot like that. So you can can kind of put it on the toe. Yeah, that's what's and then that's what it, the like I do both now. depending on what I'm doing because the toe will pull my heel back. Yeah. 
So if I kind of want that heel pressed in for carving, yep. that's kind of, I can do it from my toe rather than over the top. Yeah, totally. And it's more comfortable, but it keeps my heel in. Yeah. And then like in the street, I can kind of go either way because I run straps a little looser and then depending on the thing. So interesting. I'm all over the place <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I've, I've always, I've always felt like in the hierarchy of importance, it's boots first anyways. Yeah, I would agree. A hundred percent boots mm-hmm. because if it, there, there's no way of enjoying your day, if you have crappy boots, Yeah, I agree, but you could have crappy bindings with good boots and they, they do just okay. You can figure it out. Yeah. And yeah. same with the board, right? You can, the board's important, but it's not as important as your boots still. No, yeah. I think boots are number one. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who have you ridden for over the years for boot wise? Like who would have been the um, back in the rev days? Yeah. So rev, I mean, we were all over with boots kind of for a minute. It was blacks. You remember that? I do. Yeah. Um, European guys, yeah, yeah. blacks, North wave for a minute. Um, DC, right. When they started, I was in on that and then forum boots. Yeah. Burton boots forever. And then now nitro vans i kind of mix it up now just i'm riding the vans liner this right now they're sick oh they're so sick i've got a pair of those yeah too. i like them and they're they're fun just um they're they're i don't know they treat my injuries better i guess mm. so i can mm-hmm. kind of get away with a little but i can't ride super aggressive it's yeah of course too painful but yeah but they're wow, good man yeah it's fun that's a good that's a good gamut of boots like yeah, there and I I mean I go to work on my boots. Like you said that they're, they're important. Yeah. Last year I spent I mean I had I mean hand massaging boots at night and like putting the liners in the oven, yeah. soaking them in leather seal, putting them on, heating them up, moving them around like I put in hours on these things just to get them to perform, you know, and then the cold hits them and then they're not doing what I want. So I'm like (laughs) back at the studio grinding on the boots, you know? Yeah. So I get, yeah, I'm definitely that with boots. Yeah. 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 I lucked out in 93. Uh, the guys from intuition are in Vancouver, right? Yeah. Those are good lines. Yeah. So the guy came in and gave us the spiel and it's so fun when you hear like an inventor, you know, talking about why this is good or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I went from, almost having to quit. Like I, I, I was riding with an ankle brace inside yeah. a North wave liner when they were end boots. Like, so before oh, yeah, they were yeah. like, uh, end boots. I rode those. Yeah. 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 Before they were comfortable being yeah. North wave. Um, and I, I just thought, okay, this is going to be pain the rest of my life. Mm. And then I got those intuition liners and I like, I literally can't ride anything else now. Dude, yeah, those, it just molds to your feet, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. those are the ones I put in the oven because you can yeah. just shrink wrap them and it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. They're perfect. Yeah. They're really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that's It's interesting too because the development of the slider was happening basically in Vancouver. Like Surrey is a, a city on the outskirts of Vancouver. Yeah. And I remember the first generation of it pulled out. So they put like a whole bunch of layers of fiberglass and they were like, they were really working on that to make sure that the boards weren't heavy, but they had these slider things. Yeah. It was and, all, yeah. David Partridge. He was just New Zealand crazy guy. Really? Just inventor. He brought that from uh windsurfing is what he told us. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. Him and his wife, Janice, they were dope there. I haven't talked to him in forever, but how do you get hooked up with those guys? That was Ben Pruce. He's so, I don't know how he had had that line, but it had something to do with, with their racing background back East, you know, the, the, uh, racing boards and the <laughs> <laughs> like 45, 45, yeah. you know, did you ever do that a few times? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually pretty fun. Like yeah. those things rail and it's a different, different experience for sure. Yeah, totally. But yeah, not nothing more than a few runs really. Yeah. Yeah. I used to try and go hard boots once a year just to get that edging again. Cause mm. you come back to your freestyle board and you're like, really know what it feels like to, to rely on your edge yeah. and, okay. and ride the board the way that never you, thought of that. Oh, it was just, it was just for fun and probably cause I'm a bit of a kook, but yeah, it's <laughs> hard, it, <laughs> hard boots. Just, I can't think of anything more painful. Yeah. So. You know what? It wasn't even hard boots. It was like, just ride a board that's super narrow 
with, with 45 the, degree angles. God, yeah, to, I could get down with that. Yeah, it's pretty fun, actually. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, the edge edge work like that is yeah. good. Yeah. You put a different pressure on with those angles, too. It's so funny. I'm talking with Jeremy Joes. I'm really like just my inner kook comes out. I'm like, <laughs> I love snowboarding so much. I like to try all different crazy dumb Sick. stuff. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, I'm the same. I don't get too crazy with boards, but yeah, everything else. Boards, I'm pretty pretty traditional. Yeah. I get, I get, I mean, I try, but nothing, I just don't understand how the other stuff works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a powder board works, but I feel like stance set in the right spot on just about anything on the right pitch powder rips. Yep. Absolutely. A, anything, a sheet of plywood. I mean, of. you can, you can do the pow surfing thing that, with no bindings. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it like tacks up, it's, it's controllable. And so. Yeah, man. You know, in terms of just riding a board on a mountain, just a, you know, like a twin, like a directional twin that yeah. is fit right for you, the flex you want, the thing rides in powder. Nowadays, yeah. you know, they're just so good. Yeah, yeah. So I get pretty pretty simple on the boards. but Well, the, the rep boards actually rode really well. So they like, were They, they were really smooth well. and they were, yeah, like if you... Yeah, they were engineered like very thoughtfully on the side cuts those things were in, insane yeah like that that was like a race board but yeah. a freestyle board yeah put yeah. that thing on an edge and it would just it was the early cap stuff too, early right? cap yeah. yeah and i used to think it was that but i really just think it was the mix of that side cut and the way those blends because they were really ahead of their time on on the blends, like yeah. the way you'd blend into the tip and the tail, those were all pretty harsh yeah. leading into that. And then they learned how to draw it out and make that running length of the edge a little shorter, but then still get that like long length bite. Yeah. And they found that through that side cut arc. And I don't know, they were smart that way. For they, had, sure. they had a lot going for them. They had an incredible team with you. JP JF was on there at that yeah. time. Yeah, man, <laughs> for sure. I love seeing your face light up at the mention oh, of dude, JF. animal. That dude, like, I mean, he was, he was just a part of it. You know, that whole, that whole phase was, that was our time. That was our timeline to like hop on board and be a part of this industry. And, and he was part of that with us. And, and so, yeah, he's, uh, he's just a good memory in snowboarding <laughs> for sure. And just one of the best people, you know, totally. Yeah. So. I met him when he drove out from Quebec, he stopped in Vancouver at the local sh snowboard shops. He was living out of his car. I believe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The yeah. little gray, what was that thing? A gray, uh, yeah. Listening to tapes of Metallica for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dude is an, is a legend. Yeah, and and so whenever I would see him, it would just be like a really good time. He was always having fun. Always, yeah. Still, probably, yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now bindings and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's good, good ones too. Yeah, it's good to see all these like Daryl kids that are still in snowboarding and using their brains and seeing how how beautiful they are and you know what they've thought about and the experiences they learn come out in their products like really cool it's cool for me i see snowboarding in a in a different light now just having that experience it's yeah. something special for sure yeah well what we've been talking about the whole way through just this i feel like we're standing on a precipice here where the future burton which is the biggest company in snowboarding is kind of hanging in the balance I, i'm really not worried about burton i think they can you know the experience that i had years there as frustrating as parts of it would be, because it seemed to be on these cycles. You'd go through these, you know, I mentioned it with the uninked stuff. You sort of had these three year runs of things. These, we're going to hit something really hard. Um, you know, you hit something really hard with marketing, you get these blasts always. It's, I mean, it's tried and true, right? Yeah. So but then to do it over and over again, kind of the same way, it's, it gets, it, it gets difficult. People catch on to it. They're, they yeah. don't buy in, right? Yeah. There's seven, then there's unink, the forum stuff, like the program, mm -hmm. and family tree. But family tree seems like the one where it's kind of it's kind of hit and it's it's sort of staying. Yeah, because it has it has a timeless like message to it. The bummer is that was JG and, and Terrier. 
Yeah, but it'll still be around. I mean, they they already put that legacy to it. You know, it's going to remain, and it's just a matter of the the people at Burton, um, you know, sharing their voice to keep it around. It's imber- it's important. Burton does well. It is. It's they they have too much of the market. There's no reason to come in and like with messaging or marketing or or just like money to try and like swoop that up and take it away from them. Just let's just let it, let it ride. If someone rises to the point of taking over or taking that market share percentage over Burton, then, then it happens, but it happens because we're all supporting each other. Like Burton does well. We all do well. If Burton's in a good market and people are buying, then they're buying other stuff too, because they can't afford Burton they're right. going to go maybe buy a public or they look at Burton at snowboarding and then they're all, Oh, I like this thing. This kind of feels not totally my thing. They talk about the X games a lot and they sort of, you know, they, they look at that. They kind of play with the Olympics. I'm not, I, I like this little shop kind of vibe. And what about that public board I saw, you know, and then you sort the, the customer kind of makes their own tune, but but we need to pull that customer somehow. And those little brands that they may end up supporting aren't going to pull them in. Yeah. It's, I mean, they'll pull handfuls here and there right. with local communities, but Burton's important on many ways. And if their product's selling and people are buying it, then they're going to be buying another product. There's a lot of wisdom in what you just said, for sure. They spend a lot of money on riders, you know, and they, yeah. they bring them to the things. The product is rider driven. It actually is rider driven. Right. So, and I, you know, I have a, a really small deal with nitro, so I'm not here to big up Burton, but it's important. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's course. a, it's part of my, my brand. It's part of my legacy and for right or wrong, the thing's got to survive and you got to keep those wheels on it. Right. And we should all support it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've even I've, through other brands. Right? Yeah. I'm lucky enough to have a small manufacturer in my city Yeah, that's got a legacy of making epic boards. You know what I mean? So I can go and build a board for the local mountains that is designed right where we ride. It's super sick. Why wouldn't you? And, yeah. and Burton was about that too. And, and all these other brands should be too, like support that. Why not? Yeah. You know, yeah. why not? So what's the move from Rev to what happens next? I, I think I remember Rev kind of imploding. Yeah, that's really what happened. It just sort of, it was just done, you yeah. know, for, a, I don't know, series of reasons, probably just maybe can't meet capital, maybe yeah. too much attention too quick. Um, Were there two owners? Maybe there was a bit of a battle. Maybe between some owner battles. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't know a ton about that, but yeah. Yeah, it went away, and then I just mowed lawns for two years and just kind of... Wait, you took two years off of snowboarding? Well, yeah, I couldn't rabbit. find anything, and that was when, you know, I couldn't get... JP had just started... Uh, who did he click into there? Well, that was pretty much to forum from Rev. Yeah. So he sort of had this year of... He just went off to MDP, like, to start filming, and I was hurt that year, and that Rev thing ended, so... I just kind of chilled. Were you thinking maybe go to school or something? Or no, no, not at all. Not, I mean, for sure not. I just, it was just work and then heal and try. And so then spent the next year getting back on the board, shuffling through sponsors, not having much to show, kind of reaching out, joyride, type A, kind of landed on type A for a minute and then ended up getting in to the forum. Type A camp. had a sick team, hey? Boards yeah, there good. was, yeah, boards were good. Boards were sick. Yeah. And, uh, graphics were sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, but that was real, really pretty short, but happened. I don't even think I met anyone there. Even joyride. Just on for did, a sec. How do you get a joyride board through Ken or for, was it? Oh, how did I get that? Jeez. <laughs> I can't even remember how I ended up with that one. That was actually a sick board though. It was a, who was that board? Uh, Mackinnon was it Yoni Yoni Mackinnon? Yeah, that was a nice board. It's dope. Yeah, tail end of Joyride. They yeah. were same thing, just imploding a little bit. Yeah, it, yeah. They just it. You know, I don't know. I think it was just everyone. 
I don't know. Everyone thinks they can just sell a snowboard company for billions of dollars and that becomes the goal. And, and mm. what snowboard company has ever sold for a lot of money? None. Mm. Yeah. None. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no, <laughs> it doesn't happen. Like just build the business so you can run the thing and have, have like a dope thing. You know, you can make money, you can do dope like yeah. things, trips, have a rad product. And nowadays you can actually do that. You can, you can run a dope brand. You don't need 90 sales reps, you know, that you have to pay and yeah, that sell whole your thing, product. COVID and, just kiboshed like trade shows and yeah, all that stuff. And it's, I mean, the system was tried and true and it was solid and reliable, but it's so different now. You just it, have yeah. to, you have to navigate it different. And everyone can do it different ways for sure. Hybrids of both or turning, you know, direct to consumer only or whatever, but you can run a brand pretty lean, I think now. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I think there's room. Yeah. I think snowboarders are starting to, I don't know, bring it back, have snowboarding be more about snowboarding. I feel like there's been pockets of that through every single era. There's yeah, been agree. these guys that, you know, either build their own boards or, you know, Nick from Sam and arms making mitts and, mm -hmm. and sell them to local kids at Seymour, but creating this, culture of like snowboarding's fucking awesome you yeah. know what i mean just hustle to keep doing it and mm -hmm. and stay in it you know and keep the keep the intent pure you know? yeah so when do you join forum it's, it's kind of it's kind of happening like devin and jp were on for a year maybe before the whole yeah. eight were yeah a year yeah. um and then the whole eight came on 96 97 it's that right early there. hey yeah. wow and then 2003 was when I went to Burton. So yeah, six, seven years. It was about, it was seven years pretty much in contract terms. So yeah. And then, uh, and did yeah, your Burton. contracts kind of go from, you know, small to big over that time or what was it? Uh, it w it went from not big, but it went from unpromised to where, Really, it went to what I should have been getting it for him. So I'd negotiated some deals with with them and some boot deals and things like that. And that's really where it ended up falling through is for three years when you come through, but you don't get your your share, you yeah, know, cut yeah, in. Yeah. And that's what it was. And Burton was that's and that's all I was asking with Burton. I just said, This is what I should be making based on these promises yeah. that I fulfilled. So pay me that and let's see what the deal looks like. And, but no, it wasn't a lot like, I mean, I ended up probably doubling that in time, you know, at my highest pay. So sure. Yeah. But incentives are always good and people were buying a lot of boards then. So you made extra cash there and that was dope. And, and then, uh, you know, we were in the magazines all the time. Burton was always pushing their photos and they had, photographers they had that same formula that we did it for him just show up with the media and put it on their table and they'll run it because it's good and you made it easy yeah yeah and so burton was that same kind of support for their riders and and uh and they paid for it too just like you do so did you go from okay like are you more of a lone wolf kind of guy like what you would have probably become at burton like you're not crewing up with whoever's on Burton there mm -hmm. versus those six years or seven contracts on, on forum where you guys kind of became a phenomenon, this group of you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and there was, there was intention behind that. And so those that were all in on that were all in on that. And yeah. those that were all in on it, but ultimately not once it kind of when you're halfway through there was yeah. a couple in that original kind of group and that just starts to kind of weird things out and so the first couple oh, right, movies right, were right. were real focused it yes. was like we're all in on this and what was the first one resistance resistance yeah and then yeah. true life and, and true life right those were just everyone so all the in. whole team is together on this project you guys are going on trips outside of snowboarding together like surf trips and, yeah. and things yeah and and uh yeah yeah it sounded like what happened from kearns was that mac dog was realizing 
well, I was already making all this money on my videos. Like, now I'm sharing it. Yeah, now I'm sharing it with, with these guys. Like, what the hell is this? Yeah, and then not get, you know, and the whole whole business side of the thing that, yeah. that went sideways was just that. Like I explained in on my personal experience, it was, you know, quite a few things of just promises not being met when, right. when uh, obligations were. Yeah. Right? So I performed, pay up. Yeah. Sorry, you know, everything's in phantom this phantom that you know you just it's just this tone of mystery and oh no ultimately you know a lot of people didn't get paid a lot of people did yeah um but you know relations go relationships really just that, pull it yeah, out so that's the bean and, counters thing too right so mac dog's one of these guys who always ran his own business he didn't have like an investor guy yeah, he's a creative you he's, know yeah yeah and, and he was able to he just had such a good formula with follow the progression and really you don't put anything in because someone's paying, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And it's a fluid formula. And so to operate inside like a structure and a budget and it, it, it does, it makes it difficult. I think, Yeah, you know, cause it's, yeah, he didn't write those, those plans down. The plan wasn't like mapped out for the year it was the plan was, like you said, follow the progression. And so he followed the progression from a film component, from a camera component, from a technical component, from a creative component. Right. And then all of that was pointing at the writer and he was following it. Yeah. And then that writer went to the next writer and he just, he was, he was a natural at it. I don't think it was a, a thought process. It just was his thing. Right. And then he comes into forum and it's a, you know, it's a form, it's a formula. It's a formula. And, and but it's his formula, really. It's yeah. his formula that they put down on paper. <laughs> and then, and then you're looking at your same game and it's, and it's, you're like, I already do this. Right. You know, <laughs> he's just sharing this epic, you know, formula that's been so, you know, it's been so successful over the yeah. years and he's sharing it now with somebody that's maybe not got the integrity that, that he had. Yeah. Uh, essentially. And, yeah. And I mean, and really ultimately didn't, you know, the, the people there didn't, you know, it was, it was about the, them, it was about the party. It was about the, you know, just showing it off and being loud and having that thing. And, and it worked. It worked for the marketing components to it, for sure. Right. But there was a line, and it just falls apart unless everyone's in line. That's yeah. it. Yeah, a lot heard, of people involved. I heard about that last bit with, you know, so then, you know, the forum video wasn't going to be made by MacDog. And there were the two projects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was so. Was divided. Yeah, it was just a mess. So. Yeah, and I I left at that point, so it was. I That's just, when you left. So you left before just right, the whole thing fell apart. Right in there, yeah. yeah. And I could yeah. see it, you know. And I tried to get JP to come with me, but he really had a good deal. He had a good deal at for him. Oh yeah, yeah. He was, you know, he was one of the ones that had a well, really good deal. Well, Kearns talked about they negotiated. Well, you did this too, right? Like negotiating your contract. Um, no, oh, sorry. I'm getting mixed up. I think they flew JP to Burlington. <laughs> so, well, me and JP went together okay. to Burlington. Okay. So I'm not yeah. that mixed up. No, no, you're right. on. So we went, yeah. yeah, I talked him into like considering it. Yeah. And cause we were both looking at forum at the same, through yeah. the same lens, you yeah. know, and, and he actually was in between the deal. We were both uh, coming up on these deals and yeah. my, I had just had a different past with, with Rawl and with forum than JP, his, his deals were getting met. Mine weren't. Mm. And, um, yeah. So I was just like, come check it out. These guys are just going to do this to you eventually. So just come listen. And so we did, it was all like secret, you know, they kind of, black card us there and then walk us into the office and close the blinds, you know, <laughs> fully. It was, it was pretty funny. And that's amazing. People were creeping and, and then rumors definitely started cause a couple people see, you know, and yeah, they kind of make mention, but, and, but it and, all stayed pretty low key. And JB had like a, a contract hanging in the balance. Right. And they're like, 
you know, yeah, oh, you can't, yeah. can't talk right now. He's in Burlington. And they're like, what? He's where now? Yeah, maybe. I don't think that close. I yeah. think it was, it was, it was all within, you know, a month's time. Okay. So yeah. it wasn't like, it wasn't like, Hey, we're waiting for you to sign this today. Where are you? But right, right, right. As far as I recall. But, yeah. But yeah, he ultimately not did it. Yeah. You took the deal. I took the deal. And you guys were like a package deal. Like it's like, no, no, it's never. (laughs) Yeah. It's always been solid. And I saw you guys riding together last week or something. Yeah. No, we, we skated last night together and we probably skate again pretty close to after we're done recording this. (laughs) That's super (laughs) sick, man. It made me happy to see you you. guys. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, the the most famous rail spot, the two most famous rail riders, you know, it's thanks. It's, I mean, those moments to me are nowadays is as good as they can get, you know, it's yeah. The two of us have, have had some, a different kind of, you know, battle in our own lives for the last five years. And, and so we've, we've just nurtured each other through it the ways that we could. And we've been on different kind of paces with it. So we've been able to, you know, offer that help and yeah. And it's, it's, it's cool. I don't have that with anyone else. Yeah. I your friendship started when you guys like I mean, we were high what, school or something. No, or? Yeah. No, eighth grade, eight, <gasps> set eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's nuts. Maybe seventh grade. Maybe seventh grade. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been forever. Yeah. So, yeah, my longest friend for sure. Yeah, and growing up together, knowing each other in those like formative years. That's, yeah. That's, that's super rare. Yeah, it's it. And then, you know, also going through, you know, kind of life changing trauma, both of us really in the same, same age bracket in life kind of both at the end of our careers, so to speak, if, if they didn't end 10 years prior, right. I can't believe they've gone as long as they have, you know, but you know what I mean? Like our, Absolutely. our voice and our, our no, kind of actions and snowboarding I think took, that's it. took a rest for a minute to deal, yeah, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, I've been back two years kind of poking at it and man, snowboarding is, <laughs> it's insane. What a, what a group. Yeah. 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 So what happened with the, with, with your leg? Like, I remember you broke your leg and I remember it was a big deal. Yeah. I just, well, so I was out of the sponsor. We had all, all the Burton stuff had wrapped up. That was 2014. This was 2017. And I'd been, you know, poking at different brands and doing some different kind of work, just hustling, trying to kind of stay in snowboarding, figure out what that looked like, but really snowboarding all the time. Still, that was kind of the focus. And so just paying myself, um, you know, me and my wife saved money over the years. And for that reason, the, the, you know, savings for emergencies. And that's basically what, what was happening. And then, so you were in like an emergency mode pretty much. I mean, I just didn't have, I wanted to still be in snowboarding. So I was trying to find the lane to switch from being a snowboarder and then, to something else. And, you know, in 2014, I just couldn't see it. And I, but I could see clearly what being a pro snowboarder was. So to chase that made sense to me, even though nothing was consistent, you know, from a financial perspective, I was able to like make money and do little hustles and get things done. And, but it, cause it, I knew the space. And so then I get hurt in an avalanche snowboarding, break both of my legs. And it's, you know, I got health insurance a week before that I was right in this like buying period. So it locked in, but I ended up getting helied out. Um, you know, tib fib fully exploded right leg, especially rods, plates, and just told that I wasn't snowboarding ever. Right. Like, that, that won't happen anymore. And so now I'm at this like real pivotal point already like started to spend, you know, what would be my, our retirement, you know, cause that's what we were putting it away for and taking care of the kids and paying for them. And then I'm just like, dude, this is insane. And so it was stressful, but it was what it was. 
just move through it. Um, and then, yeah, my buddy did, I woke up like at home. It was what the second day after I got back from the hospital and I, after all the surgery and everything, it was two and a half days in the hospital and then I was home. So just a few days after the accident within a week and I wake up one morning and I had, I had asked my friends not to do any sort of fundraiser thing because they knew I was nervous of that because they're close to me. And I was just like, fuck, how am I going to pay for this? This is like, even with insurance covering it, it's not an all in deal, you know, and helis are expensive. And so I was looking at a hefty bill still and even my portion and, and not making money. So I'm stressed, but I wake up and he, my friend Brock had done the dude that saved me in the Abbey, but basically he started a GoFundMe thing. And I was just, I was a little bit bummed, you know, but when, when I saw it, I just didn't know, I couldn't really be bummed anymore. Cause within like me learning about it and then clicking on the thing, it was like, I don't know, 12 hours open and I don't know what the ask what I don't remember if there was a cap on the ask of what maybe 30 grand or something like that wow. it was like yeah. hey if we can get this much money then and it was like already past that jeez dude and then so it ended up at like 60 grand oh my and I was God. like and it did that in I mean, it got to its high number. I mean, things trickled for a while, but yeah, yeah. it got to its number in 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, and then the comments, there was like hundreds of them. And my wife would come down and just start reading them to me. And I was just like, it was just insane. Yeah. You're laid up in bed, two broken legs. And people are saying the stuff to you like, I mean, I've said this before, but it's like, the if I was dead, yeah, I hope this is what right the impact I made, and you're hearing that stuff, and then you know I'm seeing I don't know who some twelve year old kid like kicking five bucks in, and yeah. you're just like, oh, dude, take this away from I can't see this anymore. Yeah, just sobbing, you know, and yeah, I just I had to tell my wife just to archive it and. I was, I was going to have to look another day because it just was, it's just intense. And it's I kept heavy. trying, you know, it's and heavy. I just would chisel at it. And so anytime I get these kind of opportunities, it's just to, you know, I like to say thanks. And you mentioned it when you came in, you know, you contributed to that. And, <laughs> and that, that was, that was a, a snowboard industry perspective game changer for me. I well, mean, that, it, yeah. it pulled the culture back to my soul yes. and my heart. And, and I was just able to see it and like, dude, this is, I want to be here. I yeah. want to be here. Yeah. But I mean, holy shit, that's heavy. Right? Yeah. Like it is for sure. Because we, again, we talked a little off mic on the way in here and you spoke of a struggle of like, this dream job that we all see from the outside is like, you get to do this dream job at some point is not a dream job, right? Like yeah. it, it can be work. It can be stress. It can be, it can, it can be a lot of pressure too to do things that you're like, oh, fuck, I'm risking my life here. Right. Yeah. I think from the other side of that GoFundMe, it was like, here's a guy who's dedicated his life to entertaining us with amazing snowboarding. And he's, out there doing snowboarding and something tragic happens. And he's, I think it was the avalanche, the broken legs that you're completely laid up. Like it just was like, there was no option for me. I was like, Holy shit. I can't know that this happened and go about my day yeah. without contributing to making sure that this guy at least his hospital bills are taken care of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's what it did, man. Like it, you know, I was surprised. I took at least from a visible perspective and what I was able to read very little shit for people that 
have a different opinion about a GoFundMe or something. And that alone Im- impressed me in snowboarding yeah. and, and the people that are involved. I was just like, oh, we're, we've grown past that. We've either grown past it and, and just, we've either grown or I don't, I don't know. That's, that's all it is. We've grown enough that we're like, look, this is, these are our people and, and a buck matters like $1 matters, you know, it actually does. And, and that was a cool perspective for me. I looked at those GoFundMes the same as anyone that's not into them. It was a weird time. It was like right on the fence of those things being kind of accepted or not. And right. Right. And that was why I didn't, I'm like, no, do not do that. <laughs> There's an embarrassment. I'll figure to this it. out, you know, for when, sure. Don't. And when, when I, when I sent that shit, that was like my love for the snowboard industry and the people that are in it that risk their lives and, and that, or that have done stuff throughout that shows that they're the real deal. You know, you're the real deal. So, well, and I had to, I mean, I had to really try that on and, and acknowledge that or else it would have ate me up. Cause it, I had to, I had to just be like, look, this is, this is everyone saying it's okay. It's the only way I can look at this and like, yeah. And not just feel like an imposter, you know, so to speak. And so it was, it was a big moment. It, it changed. I mean, it changed everything. It changed the whole way I've ever looked at snowboarding. I mean, a lot of things are the same, right? A lot of things are I believe, I believe in product. I believe in filming. I believe in team. I believe in intensity. I believe in like going about things that way, video parts and just like the production of them and the thought process and, and that effort. And, you know, those things are the same, but believing in the culture is, uh, I, it's kind of new in a way. I mean, I've always been a part of the culture and lived the culture and loved the culture. But I don't know that I've ever looked at it in that lens where it's like, this is actually believe in this. I want this to like be, be what it is and be strong and powerful in what it is. Not, not bend to all this other stuff. Like let's be snowboarding and let's, let's be the voice. Let's let the kids be the voice. Let's let the youth be the voice and let's, now that the olds are up here in a place that, that where we were once young, like yeah. we have that in snowboarding now. It's kind of the first time where pros are, there's more pros running companies at the very top now than so ever dope. before. Yeah. And I think that's an opportunity for us in snowboarding to, to, to speak our language, you know, and to support our people. And just, I think it's a, it's going to be an amazing thing. I'm looking forward to see, you know, what, what we do with it. Yeah. You were saying that the breaking your legs was the first time you really took a break from like looking at the future, like focusing on, you know, new product, new designs next year, next year, next year, and realize, Oh shit, there's all these people who've been watching me this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, uh, it is the last yeah. Last five years have just been, yeah, it's nuts. You know, the 45 year old kids <laughs> <laughs> that walk up to me and explain to me the, the impact of those forum days and those experiences and, and what that had and hearing those messages on Instagram and, you know, as people get older, they get more comfortable to reach out. It seems like, yeah. Yeah. And, and so you, you hear these messages and it it is, it's, I had to look at him like, what, what was it that we were even doing (laughs) that, you know, made this big of an impact? I mean, I knew we were filming video parts. I knew we, you know, we were spearheading movements like the jib fest and we were progressive in contest structure and changing the tone and, and then team videos and kind of bringing that to snowboarding and putting focus to it. And, So we were doing things that were, I mean, I recognized that we were at the front of something. Right. But 
we were at the front of it. Yeah. When we you're were not it, seeing yeah, yeah, what was yeah. happening. You T- know, and let's talk about the jib fest. How, how did that come about? That's just, just that, just like we, you know, the same way I came up wasn't contests. And so we were getting pulled into contests cause you kind of had to do them a little bit at yeah. the time. So, you know, first X games were there in Crested Butte and it's like me and JP are last, you know, second place, second to last place and last place. And that's sort of like becomes our theme in these contests is like, wow. okay, let's see either who can get last place or who can beat <laughs> the other. <laughs> and so we were like, we were competing, you know, generally for 16th and 17th. Cause yeah. that's usually about the number of people that were invited. And Otterstrom said he saw you guys at an X games roll up, look at the thing, go, Nope. And, and, jet out he's like wow all the time i wish i could do that all the time <laughs> i don't i mean there was there was few contests so you'd that be I like, showed up to and took a practice like, room I, I went to x games yeah i showed i up. did my thing yeah <laughs> well and we were in on yeah. like celebrity invites too so yeah. we, they had like these couple celebrity and so we would get invited based off our video parts and we're like dude yeah. this is like we don't we don't even know how to do this. What like even a rail on those things were like this is terrifying. This thing is no way. I'm not touching that thing. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I'll do a 360 over that hard jump, but that's it. Yeah. And they were like 40 foot jumps. Then they weren't even that big, but Yeah. Yeah. You know, our space was just not that and So yeah, it it came about that. Nixon was supportive, wanted to do something, you know, cool and fun and just through discussion with those minds, you know, Chad, Gunny, um, me downing JP, we're just rapping, like, what do we do? And let's do a contest that is invite only. And we're, and like, we all judge it. How does Simone get his invite? Do you uh, remember? Uh, Johnson. Yeah. Johnson plugged him in. There was like a, um, stepchild tie sick somehow maybe kerns yeah was right i can't remember but it was through johnson someone was communicating with johnson yeah and yeah there's this rail kid and he won some event maybe up there and so we just invited him kind of on like a whim and we were like pulled him in and immediately like we're gonna go to haze mode and then he just turned it on and we're just like all right you're you're in yeah (laughs) because you're going (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, it's just sort of happenstance. It's just sort of, and he won the whole thing. Did he win the whole thing? The first one? Yeah, he well, Yeah. He won the first one <laughs> and then Duffacy, I think got best trick. And I think yeah. he actually got second place or something too in the first or holy shit or no, I won the, f- and then I won the second one. Yeah. Or Simone got, yeah, first. And those would come out as videos too, right? Like that was kind of a part and parcel of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It was a smart move. Yeah. We did three of those and they did really well. Those were fun. Yeah. Yeah, And those were came out, you know, alongside of those, those forum projects and Mac dog was doing a project on the side those years too. So the later years, so three movies coming out of MDP camp, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Completely nuts. Yeah, Pretty nuts. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of that. Yeah. You touched on the idea of, you know, the stress around a long snowboarding career. Yeah. And towards the end being like, do I do this? Do I not? Like, did you ever have to do some therapy? Do you have your, you know, like mindset stuff? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, I've done a lot of it myself. I've done, you know, quite a bit of therapy with, with help as well. Um, and, but less about like the whole pro trend, like being pro, not so much there. It was more after the accident and just like sorting out, like, what do you do now? Like, how do you separate from this kind of identity built around yourself that you didn't even know you were, you were doing, you know? And right, right. But I had pretty good processes in navigating that just naturally, I think. And so I'd sit in these. I mean, I'd just go through therapists. I'd give them all about five, five sessions. Yeah. And after five, trying five, I, through that same process, it, you know, there was a lot of, like, they would just start writing my 
information down. Like they were taking notes I've from me there. and yeah. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like <laughs> this is supposed to be the other way. You're supposed like, to be the expert in this shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, I just, they were so intrigued with my perception and the way that I worked through things, you know, not that I'm doing it any, any smarter than anyone else. It was just the thing I was picking up on. Right. My way was yeah. intriguing to them. A life lived in integrity with purpose is rare. That's what it comes down to. I mean, maybe I just, I, I also like, I'm, I'm clear, like I've always had a lane. And yeah. so my, my confusion when it wanders, it's doesn't, it's really not too far away. Yeah. I can get, I can get like separated pretty, you know, if it's, if you're walking like three feet apart from someone, but there's a cinder block wall between it. Yeah. Really hard to tell. Yeah. But you can walk three feet away from someone and it's a half wall and it's much, much more visible. Totally. Right. right? And so it's kind of that thing where I'm there, like I'm offline, but not far offline, but it's a pretty dark, I can't really see Mm. where I'm heading. So you get that space was, was rough. And, but that was mostly just being hurt and not even being able to move. Like I'd never been that hurt where to the point you're not, you don't know if you're going to be able to bring it back. I mean, I knew I was, that was my self-talk, you know, the whole time, but yeah, lots of days on the floor and the, in the garage and, and just, you know, in tears in my own sort of black corner Mm. and Mm. moving through those times, you know, and it's just trying, try not to involve the family, try not to have them see that component of right. your, of your mind. And because it's, they've already gone through it. They're already seeing someone incapable, someone that can't move. That's, you know, my kids are looking at it like, this is the dude that can move. This is the dude that really, he's the one that plays on the tramp with me. He's the one that showed me skateboarding. He's the one that showed me snowboarding, biking, and and we do these things as a family and then why is he just sitting there? And right. th- this is kind of right. like the years right. of their life too, right? Like 10 to 15, this is their, this is the portion of their teenage years where I remember that feeling like it was 20 years long. Totally. Three years, you know, yeah, man. there was a lot, a lot of things coming in. Yeah. And so that, that hurt. So I just, you know, it was just navigating that stuff, but mm-hmm. But yeah, closest, darkest I've ever been for sure. But I feel like, you know, I don't know, the clearest I've ever been coming out of it. Right. Without even like having full, like things fully locked in, you know, I'm right back into, I just left Powder and Woodward, which is where I was the last couple of years. And, and I'm back to kind of my own thing and just sort of that bet on yourself thing again and going to keep it in snowboarding and you know different kind of goals and I have these gym goals here where my office is and a lot of mental physical rehab happens here and so that's a lot of my message and a lot of uh importance to me is just kind of that using your experience to inspire other people to like hey you can do this and I just keep it local when I can it's not not something I'm gonna sell off and go big box with you know but it's Yeah, it's my community. I can help some snowboarders here that trust and have a good group that are that are doing it with us. We're we're giving them results, and they're thankful for it. And that's that to me is like such a reward. You know, Sage Sage and Zach Hale for you know two of the bigger names of the kids that are in and training consistently. And I get to send those dudes off like they just went two weeks ago and they won't be coming back in for most of the season, you know, cause they're, they're on now. Yeah. But to like be with them all summer and their consistency and them wanting to show up because they're seeing the gains and the wins and the mental just capacity grow. And, and then to hear Sage, you know, I just recently heard him talk about how on another podcast that this, what was he talking about that on? Oh, he just told us um, on our own. And it was, it was just cool. He, we, you know, he's, he was in a place when he first came in here that 
he was confused off of the Olympics and just, he was sorting things out and this just buffed it out and put it in line and gave him the Dope. focus that he was looking for. And to hear that like two years later and then to see what he's done in here too. Yeah, man. It's like, I just, I'm like, dude, that that's a superhero. And like, we were just part of that progression and that's, that's phenomenal. Like what an experience. Yeah. Support for, yeah. Support yeah. for people that have that drive to actually take it to the, yeah. I mean, the level that things are at now is insane. It's insane. And, and to think that I'll never do that, but this person comes here for, for the experience that we're helping create and curate and provide for them because it puts them in that space. I, I just like, I mean, dude, how, like, why, why ever do we do things for money? when you can get a hold of something like that, I mean, maybe people just don't and that's why, but yeah, if you have something like that and get experience it and then money presents itself and it's one or the other, I, I, I don't see how people pick money, dude. I just don't yeah. see it. I don't. I, and, I, I was working on myself with, with that yeah. because I, I don't, I don't see podcasting being, you know, super lucrative. Right. Other people have, have said, and and I know other podcasts make more money, which is fine. Depends on how you do it, though, right? That's how you, yeah. right, right. So, like, I, my fear with the money thing is that as soon as I'm reliant on the money for my bills, et cetera, this changes. This I can't changes. come in here. Yeah. I can't come in here with integrity and be like, hey, it the does. reason I'm here is because you're an inspiring snowboarder that is, you know, going to have a great story and we're going to just talk openly about it. Right. Yeah. No. And there's, I mean, there's something special about that. You know, these, yeah. I mean, I, I was listening through yours and that's exactly what it, what it came to. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm fairly new to the podcast thing and, yeah. and getting in those habits of what you're going to listen to and, <laughs> yeah. and how you're going to give yourself that time, mm-hmm. which, which ones. And so I found, I only have, Really four, four that are in my kind of, yeah. Are they all snowboarding or no, are they? No, no, you yeah. like, it's this one F and rad podcast mm-hmm. and then it's bomb hole yeah. and then it's Joe Rogan, which is really I, I, very, I almost, <laughs> I very rarely click there anymore, but, I, but I, there's I, a lot there that I enjoy. Yeah. I always give some sort of a disclaimer when I'm talking, I'm right. like, look, I do not endorse everything this guy, monkey says, but I do like his idea of being curious about life and talking to cool people. I know. And he, and I love his, you know, you can, you know, kind of his stance on opinions on certain things, but he's also, he lets both sides talk always. So I, right. I, I, from a podcasting, like pers- or an interviewer perspective, I think that that's, yeah, that's a professional trait. So I respect, and he was really, I was like, that's kind of what you live. If you want to understand podcasts, it's kind of the one you have to go listen to because it gives you the format in at a general perspective and it sort of helps you understand well how you were are going to listen to a podcast i mean at least it did for me and then yeah yeah and then the other one is uh simon sinek i listen to him i don't know who that is he's just more more kind of i don't even know what he does normally but he's more motivational oh and huberman oh yeah huberman's Huberman's dope he's so five those are kind of my five and that's rad but anyway it's yeah, years, years. I just, I was impressed with because it was, it's, um, it's just someone that loves snowboarding, someone that loves talking about like, like you, you know, to be able to geek out on that kind of the histories and like the history components and actually care about it is yeah. pretty cool. I mean, thanks. Man. I'm into like the history and parts of it, but yeah, but I don't, I don't really care to go dig for it. But to hear a story yeah. told well yeah. about part of it, I'm like, then all of a sudden I'm attached to that thing I knew of or part of even yeah. more. And so I like, I like getting tuned into that. Yours, oh, yours fun, seems man. to fill those, those holes really well. Oh, thanks man. Just cause it's rich, right? It goes back far. Yeah. Um, you're, you know, you know, snowboarding a few years before I started looking at it from 
from the voice anyway, yeah, from, yeah. My, from and, my knowledge. Yeah, well, the thing that happened was I started to look back. But mm. It was actually, it, it was a function of starting the thing, was that if I would have called you seven years ago, I wouldn't even know how to get a hold of you and, and be like, hey, I want to do a podcast. Yeah, right. You, uh, you wouldn't have been on the show just because, like, hey, you're going to be my first guest. You're like, mm, I don't know if I, I want to do that. Yeah. But so I was like, well, if I go back a little ways and then I was like, well, how far back can I go? My very first phone call was to Sherman Poppin, who invented the snurfer. That's crazy. And he called me back and I was like, oh, this is a good formula because he hasn't, he's just ready to talk about it. He hasn't mm -hmm. talked about it in a long time. Yeah. You call Chuck Barfoot. He's like, Let's he, go. he just wants to talk about it because he's like man, I used to be talking about this all the time. Oh, nice it's day. 40 years later. Oh, you want to hear some stuff. He's like, you want to, you want to hear about Tom Sims. And I'm like, holy shit, this is fascinating. You found the guarantee to get people. Well, so down. it was, yeah. so it's just like, yeah. I, I heard it through Donna, like Burton was a get rich quick scheme. This wasn't a get rich quick scheme. This was a motivation thing. Mm -hmm. This was like, I wanted to motivate podcasters to make a this American life about snowboard stories. Yeah. Like I was like, come on, we can do better. And the very first thing that you can do is get a guest list that has Sean Palmer in it. Yeah. That has, you know, Keith Wallace. Absolutely. That has Mike Jacoby that have these people that are like out there ready to talk about their life in snowboarding. But there's, there really wasn't much media while they were there. It was just getting built. Yeah. So there's not much information about these guys. Right. But I mean, I talked to Dave Dowd, who to me was like an ice ski photo in the magazines. And he's got this rich life in snowboarding. That's like a 20 year career. Mm. I'm like, all right, let's, let's talk. Let's, let's hear this. Put some of that out there. Cause there's people who will listen and get some sort of satisfaction out of knowing a little bit more about this thing we all love, which is snowboarding. Yeah, it's a rad scroll when you, you kind of run through your, your list of people because it is, it's all over. You'll catch, you know, a pro and then you'll catch a 10-year-old pro and then you'll catch a 20-year-old pro <laughs> yeah. then you'll catch the business person and and then Donna, you know, it's like, it's it's cool. I think that, that it's spread out, you yeah. know, it's covering the gamut, it's covering important people, um, important stories that Thanks, man. it's a time for them to be told, you know, this is, this is our history. And, and the thing is, is we have it now, like yeah. we have a history. So I don't know if there's a year, actual year that you need to have, you know, produce some sort of thing to get a history, <laughs> Sure, right, but you know, right. 40, 50 years in close now. And, and we've built a history. We have eras, we have, um, generations, you know, we have generational pros, you know, it's, it's pretty rad. We have mom, you know, dads, moms, kids ripping together, yep. competing together. Yeah. Like, cause Temple there's a hook. contest that has a spot for dad and yeah. mom. Yeah. And then there's yeah. a spot for, you know, the young gun and you're like, dude, this is insane. We can both, we can all, all of us, participate in this yeah you know and it's i just think that that's where we're we have a history we're yeah. snowboarding and it's it's pretty pretty rad <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to talk about it when you want to teach and educate and it's not always when you're in it yeah you, uh, you're it's different it's a different voice the generation know? before you wasn't invited to do that you know what they I mean? weren't like that was yeah, super lame actually what what happened in snowboarding yeah they weren't and that was because i started so early on as i was getting to those guys like damien damien sanders was the first one where he kind of wanted out and he couldn't get out because mm -hmm. he was because snowboarding was getting so big and he was such a celebrity version of a snowboarder you know remember i don't know if you remember i this, remember but yeah, yeah so you remember him winning like the trans world raider pole awards and he hadn't even snowboarded for a year <laughs> yeah like he was like the most extreme guy but he, it, there was no new stuff 
No. And it, so that whole time he was taking checks feeling like an imposter, which well, is it's crazy. Hard. Yeah. I mean, you come from the underground and rise up in a space that doesn't want this thing to rise up. And then, I mean, maybe he was the only one at the time making the money, but it wasn't. There maybe been a couple of them, but not a lot yeah, like that yeah. you could see. And there, so, I mean, I would imagine that all of a sudden you're you're banking and you're like, dude, I'm kind of the only one here. Yeah. I'm the only one on the snowboard. Yeah. yeah. Making all this money. How's this a thing? <laughs> I mean, I don't know him personally, but that would trip me out. Yeah, sure. I think there was I think there was a feeling of like one to one. Like they're paying me to snowboard and I haven't been snowboarding. Like it's a bummer. Ooh, that's right. a hard one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a hard one. But then I think around him. So that's, that's the one story that's completely abnormal. Almost every other one, like Chris Roach, like he's like, Hey, how come I'm not getting my check? And I'm misquoting Roach here. He never said that, but, but the general story is you're too old. Yeah. What are you 23 or something? You're, yeah. you know, we got to make room for the young kids. It's the same sort of thought. My mom told me, and I always remember it. She just said, if you're, cause I was complaining about taxes one time. And she just said, if you're paying taxes, you're making money in that light. It's like this, the pioneers never make the money. The That's pioneers true. never really see quote, the success of the thing right there. Cause they're in it. They're yeah. the ones creating it. Like Roach was creating what, you know, a method looked like. Roach right. was designing the melon. He was designing back 180 melons. He was designing all these, he was designing style, you know, right. and he was, he was in that, he was the pioneer of engineering that process with a few others. And that is the soul of snowboarding now. Like if you talk to anyone that's really going to get into it with you, they're going to come around to style. And they were influenced by someone's style and that just, you don't, you can't, it's that, that just never gets paid. <laughs> it yeah, really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't like when that's the thing you can have stylish people that are, you know, the best in the world and getting paid lots. I'm not saying that, but when that's the thing, you're just, you're in a market that doesn't exist. Yeah. Cause that's the soul. It's, that's what it's about for you, you know? And then, yeah. When you think about those early, like, so I just was in Colorado and it brings that memory to like the TDK world pro, the swatch world pro, mm -hmm. like those first spotlights of snowboarders, you know, maybe the highlights were on TV, but we would see them in the magazines. Those guys, a lot of them were there on their own dime. Yeah. You know, like Quinn took a bu Quinn Sandvoll took a bus there. <laughs> <laughs> so rad. You know what I mean? And then he yeah. had to rent a board because his board got stolen on the way. Oh, man. And none of the team would, get, you know, l lend him one of their boards. It's like those guys, that whole bunch of them were there holding on to their receipts for the entry fee. Can I get a receipt for the entry fee? Because I'm going to try and build this back to some you know, guy who's building snowboards Someone. in his garage, right. who's, who's also trying to hold those guys off from, well, don't go to every contest. You know what I mean? But if you go, make sure you win Yeah, because yeah. I can pay your 50 bucks entry How fee I support this? Yeah. out of my, you know, savings or whatever, you know, it, it, it's a bunch of people who were struggling and the money wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. But the, but what the content that was created was pure and genuine and, and the, and the personalities that came out of it, Palmer wasn't doing what Palmer was doing. You know, it wasn't fake. He was really that guy. Yeah. He was really that guy, you know? Yeah. And that mattered. And that, that's really what snowboarding is. So to, to remind that and teach that, I think is sick just to say, Hey, we started like this. Yeah. And it was, it was really from nothing. And it was from just, yeah, nothing. Passion. Just passion. Yeah. That's yeah, it. That's just it. passion. Yeah. And I think that's, that's just insanely beautiful. Yeah. And I, I think that's where, that's where the support came, came from for, you know, the GoFundMe. Oh, absolutely. Was that you guys lived with passion 
And there's a bunch of other people that re- uh, resonate with that. And they just said, you know what? This is the right thing to do. And it's the not even the right thing to do. This is just something I want to do. This is just what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah. 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 I know. And that, what a powerful message it is. It is something to, yeah. I mean, I, I have my ways of reminding myself of that constantly because it's important. But well, I don't yeah. Don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. When, when we talked about it when we first came in and I remembered that I sent the money. I was like, oh, shit, that, like, I just forgot. You know what I mean? Like, it's not yeah. like something that I think about all the time. Yeah, it's and I've, just, and I've yeah. heard that a few times. Yeah. And, and again, anytime I'm on a mic or something, I like to say just if if you did and I'm, and I'm in front of you, yeah, please let me know. Because it's not a, <laughs> hey, I did this for you. For me, it's an opportunity to say thank you face to face. Because I can say it here. I don't know who will hear it, who won't. Right, right, right. But, man, face to face, if if you were a part of that in any way and, and a part of anything. Like if you, if you looked to me for snowboarding in any way and yeah. you see me around, like I'm, I'm, if I'm just walking and just come say what's up and ask, you know, cause I want to know, I yeah. want to know what you think. I want to know. Well, for me, it was it my donation to it was, or contribution to it was a genuine thank you to you. Like, I thanks for it. living your life that way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a hundred percent what it was. It's like, holy shit. Thanks for putting your neck on the line. And well, yeah. And, and you know, snowboarding is selfish, so it's hard to get those thank yous. <laughs> Cause you're like, dude, I was really just <laughs> wanting to bust that back lip. I'll be honest. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted that feeling, but, but I get it. You know, it's, well, we've, for we've put up. a lot into this and we've showed up and for we've... showing up because like you said, with the mouse or sorry, not mouse, but whitey thing, like you don't know what the formula is right now. Right. You don't know what your job is. You're like, Oh, our job is going to be wait for these assholes. Like, yeah, well, no, we're snowboarding. And then you learn to like program that into the outline. It's like, okay, it. you wait. Yeah. This is, there's some waiting here. That's what that looks like. And yeah. then, yeah. And you learn the job and yeah, but yeah, walk the line carefully and pay attention to why you're in it. If, if you get these opportunities and create these opportunities for yourself, cause it's a lot of it. Now you kind of gotta, yeah, you gotta create it. You gotta, move your way into it it's less of a someone found you right nowadays well i know like. i i know a, a few of the younger pros and some that listen to the show and so that your words are going to reach these guys and they, and they do like that's what you're doing with your job but it's like i think it's important for the younger pros to have people to look up to that have given back to the community the whole way through yeah which i think so dope. too yeah, yeah. And they'll just, they'll learn, they'll learn to be better pros. Yeah. You know, it's like the skate park mentality. You know, there's something so special about a skate park that there could be a kid that comes with a Walmart board still in the plastic and Alex Chalmers can be like, dude, you need to take all this plastic off. He's peeling the plastic off this kid's board and helping this kid just roll around for the very first time. That's, you're not getting that at a basketball court. No, you're not getting that, you know, even, even on a, at a, well, you might get it in a half pipe or in a park or something on a, on a mountain. Maybe. Yeah. But the, the right skate park is a sure. really, really like, it's the beating heart of the skateboard industry. And, but it's actually got like a wall around it. You couldn't just go- show up at the skate park with your stuff and start selling yeah, shit. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, yeah, that, that whole thing is a mystery and it's a thing that you can only navigate by your personality and your, your kind of efforts there. And yeah, it really can't be described. It's, you just got to enter the space and you'll know if it's for you or not. Yeah. And it's rad. Yeah. When, when you see it functioning, you're like, wow, this little community like really works. It's the best. It, yeah. it is actually my outline for everything I do. If I can just go back and think skateboarding and just say, okay, what, what would I do as a skateboarder? When that mentality that I hooked into, when I, when I decided I'm, I'm a skateboarder, yeah. it was that, that perception of what that was, was mine. It wasn't like, I mean, being a skateboarder doesn't have a, a formula, but right. to me it was, having a skateboard, figuring out how to get it to jump off of the ground. Like the person I saw doing it. Yeah. 
and then wearing the clothes that I saw that person doing it. And then I was a skateboarder and that process has just evolved. But the three, it was, you know, all of a sudden I had a task in front of me, figure out how to get that skateboard, figure out how to get those clothes. Yeah. And figure out how to jump it off the ground (laughs) and no one to teach me. Right. You know, I could say to my mom, I want those shorts. Yeah. And so I could get pretty close on the clothing pretty quick. Yeah. Skateboard. No, no money for something like that. So I had to wait, give it time. So you learn this patience process, you know, and, and then, uh, the commitment process to the thing. How do I get it to jump now that I've got it? Okay. What does this look like? No one to, no one to watch still. I haven't seen videos or learned those exist. Wow. And you work through the progress of like, but I saw this one dude and I know it came off the ground (laughs) and I know it was still on his feet Yeah, and he didn't grab the thing. Yeah. How did this happen? So you go into that workshop and figure it out and, that's my process. Every video part I filmed was those same three steps. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any business thing I go into, it's the same things. It's just interesting. That's I, super. I sick. think that through, like break it down. Yeah, do Kern, the process. Kern's really pointed out how the like we talked about it a few years ago about the word poser, you know, and how mm. much weight that held, you know, like so much crazy. Like, like if someone was to call you a poser, it was this such an insult at such a soul level, like of who you were, Oh, because yeah. you Hurt. knew if you were being a poser too, right? Like you knew if you were, if you were saying you could do a trick that you couldn't do. Yeah. You or knew. some signs of like scuffing your shoes up on the belt sander oh, instead of, dude. you know, you're like, Really? Do I have that? Dude, I don't do that. How am I like, what is it? What's, what's yeah, giving me yeah. away that yeah, I'm yeah, a poser? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The scrape marks on the bottom of a board For sure. that people think like that's a screwdriver, <laughs> homie. No, it's not. It was a sharp ledge, bro. <laughs> that's true. It was right? rough. It that's, was rough. That, that's real deal. Like I remember oh, yeah. seeing those people doing that stuff and being like, okay, how do I avoid the kiss of death of yeah. being called a poser. Well, there's only one thing that was a formula for me was do it, do it, yep. do it. That's the thing. Just go and do it. And I think that's, that's still where I'm at now, even though I, yeah, now I'm starting to feel like a poser. <laughs> I, w- I just went to Colorado and like just posed around. You just, the, but you got to take no the snow down. There. There's yeah. no snow there. So like, yeah, you can't do it. If there's no snow. I, yeah. And I don't know what the snow situation is here. I came in here kind of poserish, like looks it's, like it's going to snow at some point. Yeah. We might get some snow this week dry right now, but yeah. I think how's, yeah, Thursday's how, looking good. Maybe. How's the season been? We had a fun early season up at the spot, our little rail zone. And we, yeah. we got dumped on early November, a lot of snow Yeah, and our zone holds snow. So we just would farm it in, got quite a few good sessions. I mean, I've probably been. 15 times up there but just that just hike in and yeah yeah you haven't been on a chairlift yet no there's you know therapy component to the hike in and yeah and then the kind of process of that 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 stuff's important always been important for me to start my season kind of in that headspace and so i still kind of roll through the motions even though it's not video part based anymore. It's just, we should talk about who you're riding for. Who, who do you still have on the program at this? Yeah. Nitro, nitro L one. Those are kind of, that's my, um, I guess hard goods, you know? Yeah. And they're great. They've been just supportive of me. Give me the boards. And this year I'm riding a little bit more. So we'll try and get a little more footage and do some more stuff like that. And then you know, the brands that helped me out are Bubs Collagen that helped my bones get back together, you know, and, Dope. um, there's been a couple of people have just been kind of with me the whole time and, you know, not even financially, just, just always hooking it up, making it happen and taking care, you know? So, but yeah, Nitro and L1, they actually pay a little bit of money and sweet and give me product when I want, which is dope. Yeah. Nitro's had a crazy long history. Quinn Sandville was on Nitro, man. He was, de- he was designing boards was with he? nitro way back in the day. Oh yeah. I, I have was- this, sh- I'm, I have this, his clip in the pipe in my head playing since he said that. And, yeah. and I can't think of the board. I want to say he was on that. Um, he was on K2 then. I don't know. With yeah. Like a stringer surfboard type of graphic in that video, but I can't remember. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I he know, has these board bags of. He he rode like the Nitro Diablo. It was like a 186. The Diablo. Yeah, through yeah. these like. That's what it was. Yeah. It had that string. It oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one you're that's talking what about. It is. Yeah. yeah, it has. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. He, he was. Uh, he was ahead of his time. He's talking yeah. about getting, you know, like I getting dig up a little more on him. Yeah, he said everybody at uh, every he got everybody at the U.S. Open chanting "fuck the judges, fuck the <laughs> judges, fuck the judges." Yeah, because he yeah. he did his whole run switch and felt that he should have got better than fourth. I think he said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's rad. <laughs> Snow rings rad. Snow rings it's punk rad. Rock. Yeah, it's yeah. Punk. yeah, and there's it's certain rad. guys like Quinn that are just. You see them and you're like, that's the real deal. Yeah. That's the, you know, the through line the whole way through. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you're one of those guys. Jeez. Well, thank of course. you. Thank you. There's, there's a few of them and yeah. becoming more and more. I think people are getting more, yeah, more able to stay in their lane and confidently. Yeah. We're built, we're teaching it more. We're building people up to do that. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Hey, you, you young pros out there, you've got a, you've got a lot of uh, responsibility to this thing that that so many people built with so much love and passion yeah yeah and i and i think they're in a phase to to accept it and learn it and they're willing yeah at least what i see i'm i'm really impressed with the the new kids these days like the way they're coming up and um you know the men and the women that they're just their voices are they're just on hey, point. Speaking They're of the women, have you watched the Uninvited Three? Do you? Does that get? I in haven't your feed? yet. It you does. It. I, yeah. I've been watching all the clips. It's in the feed. I follow yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm. I'm. It. I'm fans because yeah. those like as the streets, dude. I gotta like I back the streets and yeah. and that's like I don't really know any of them well, but I I just I think it's amazing, dude. It's, a beautiful it's all thing. it's yeah. all style. It it's is. All it style. is. Yeah, it's the, super inspiring. I'm, yeah. I I do. I pace myself on my movies. Um, yeah. I'm I'm super. My mind has to be right to absorb them the way I want, and yeah, that is one that I want to appreciate. Sexton's video part was the last, the most recent that I just visited, and yeah, he just put out a really good one. And same thing. It took me, you know, four days to kind of get my head right to go watch it and it's only a four minute edit but isn't that insane right? i just want to yeah. give yeah. him i want to give him the attention he deserves for putting that thing is together and putting in that time and i know what it takes and yeah and uh and i know his quality control internally on his stuff and so it's cool to see what he puts out and decides is is good enough for his part you know and so yeah it was that was that was that my next one, I think, will be probably the Jake, probably the Jake movie. I think I'm almost prepped to see that. Get ready to cry. I man. am Rider. Is that what it's called? Dear Rider. Dear Rider. Yeah. It, it, there's a lot of stuff in there that's really personal, that's surprising, and just like, holy shit. Yeah, I cried a bunch during that one. Oh, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I've been, it's I been a real that. emotional kind of, uh, video season this year there's a lot of really intense you know learning to drown is is just Kamira's one mm, spencer o'brien's oh, yeah. yeah spencer o'brien's is um is also amazing and it's a uh, precious leader woman like there's is so there many friend? i didn't hear about that oh yeah that one's that. good that one's what really was good the name of that? precious leader woman I didn't realize how good of a snowboarder she was. Holy shit. She's, yeah, she's insane. Good. Yeah. She's been good too. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Precious and then leader. yeah. Precious leader woman, Marie, Marie France Roy did uh mind over mountain. Oh yeah. I just saw the, the um, trailer for it or then like, Insta. yeah, they just did an Insta post today, maybe of that or yesterday or something. I just saw yeah, it I went today. to the world premiere and it was in Vancouver and it, the, people who were in it hadn't seen it yet so oh, that's, that's just like amazing. a it's like that's a classic one for me. Yeah. yeah 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 that's a fr that's oh yeah great. that's how that should go down yeah while i have you here holy shit what was the what was the craziest premiere story you got oh my gosh <laughs> i mean i probably won't share my craziest one because that was <laughs> involving more than just myself and so <laughs> for the sake of uh 
<laughs> protecting the innocent, I guess. Yeah, dude. Or the guilty. <laughs> or the guilty. Yeah, rather. The guilty. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, some of the Burton... I mean, for him was nuts. It was just a different kind of exposure. But then... Those early early days when I was in Forum, I would say 03 to 09. In some of those days, it was crazy. We would go to Japan and I've just never seen, I've never seen a sea of people move like that for a couple of snowboarders standing there to sign autographs. And I mean, old men crying in tears, like Jeez. telling, offering you their babies, <laughs> no, their come wives. On. No. Oh, straight up. What? Dude. And I'm, I mean, I don't know what it means when someone offers you their baby. Is it like, I know it's, it's certainly different than when someone offers you their wife for <laughs> sure. But I don't, I'm just like, no, it's cool. You can keep your baby. Nope wife's uh, it's cool she's all yours let's just keep it that's just incredible and like crying on on knees you know and just like and that 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 was a crazy imposter syndrome yeah what does that even mean i, I can't i it's can't insane. wrap my like, head around that and then um you know in japan and if had, you're in, if, in korea that was the crazy we went there i'd yeah. never been we did one trip there japan had just had just started to kind of get used to us showing up. So it, that right. intensity started to back off. We go to Korea, we roll up and it's like black, blacked out cars out there of the glass. And we walk out of the glass of the customs and it's like paparazzi dude, the, the place lights up with flashes and I'm thinking someone's behind us. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like me. Who is that? Me mods. Um, probably DCP, <laughs> You know, some of, some of the Zanink guys, uh, Solberg most likely. And, yeah. Um, Sean, Sean was at that one and they were look at, they were shooting photos of us. It was crazy. And I'm like, this is for us. And then, then these, these Koreans in black suits, big Koreans, which was strange anyway, there's yeah. not very many huge Koreans. Yeah. Yeah. They're security guard, American security guard, huge, right? <laughs> Probably wow. Canadian security guard, <laughs> yeah, huge as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 And, uh, we each had our own. So there was, and those what? dudes would follow us around everywhere we went and they would pull us through the parties because people would mob us. And we were in this five star hotel that was like gold plated everywhere. Jeez. Just treated like royalty. And it was, it was just different. I'm yeah. just like, wow, yeah. this, well, we'll suck this up because this ends in a week. As soon as I get home to reality where you're just like, <laughs> you're a regular guy dude. going down the street. Yeah. We're in the middle of, you know, some alley in Minnesota filming without permission in the, in the dumpsters, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some so it's, it's just different. Then, then the security guard comes and it's a completely different deal. He's yeah. like, get the fuck out of He's here. Like, Yo, beat it. dude. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? And you're like, yo man, I just had people <laughs> crying at my feet. <laughs> yeah. Who are I, you? Some 18 year old guy trying to <laughs> you don't care about your job yeah yeah well who are you to tell me to leave i know it, it was oh that's yeah, quite a contrast but those yeah those early years were crazy and the european tours were always nuts and you know yeah. but really it's not that nuts it's just it's like an overload of passion at every one of those things that's really what it is it seems yeah. chaotic it seems like you know mistakes are being made and people are being dumb and and you know, not smart on their actions, but it's passion. It's just people juiced up on like the experience that's happening. Bunch of pros, bunch of like people stoked about it. Yeah, man. The pros are being cool. Like the people are like, what? They'll talk to me. This is what? They're just like us. This yeah. is insane. Yeah. And it, and it pops and things go down. But I can't imagine how like, how do I go back to my life if I came up to you and, and my, with my wife? I'm thinking my wife now. And let's say we had a baby and I'm like offering you the baby. I know. And saying, you can have my wife. Yeah. Like the rest of my life is ruined. That's, I just insane. ruined I my entire under, yeah. thing. I mean, I wrote it up to some, <laughs> I'm like, maybe there's some cultural thing here that I'm missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I got, I mean, I just got to assume it's something like that, you know, because... <laughs> 
yeah. I mean, that's crazy. That guy would, that would have been a hard car, car ride home. For yeah, that, for that, sure. That for sure. Yeah. Sign my face, shine my forehead. <laughs> no, sorry. I don't sign bodies, boy or girl or kid. Yeah. Sign my baby, sign my baby's face. Have you signed jackets? I, I went up yeah, to the guys jackets. In, yeah, Mount Hood. That's see, I've always been this guy. Went to Hood in 90 and got collected a whole bunch of signatures on my jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. And then went home, gave it to the local snowboard shop because I'm also a bit of an egomaniac. Like, hey, you probably want to put my cool ass jacket up in your <laughs> shop. I'll sign up. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. No, I would, I would, I would get like all those guys I would be on tour with. I'd always get a poster with all their sig- sigs. That's on a it smart thing to do. Yeah. It's like a time stamp and like a memory, like, Hey, I was here with all these dudes. Yeah. That's all it was. It's just like, this was fun. And then you remember those kind of that banter at those signing tables and yeah, some are three hours long and some are six hours long. Some were, you know, 30 minutes. But yeah. It was, that, it was just cool. Different experience. It's that, it was that torturous sometimes and sometimes fun or was no, it mostly I mean, just fun? It's, it's all fun. I mean, we would, we would give, you know, we'd get that kind of jaded tone here and there and just be like, oh, really, we got to do this. But <laughs> I mean, all in all, it was, I, it I, was great. Like visiting with those people and hearing that, like, <clears throat> cause that, like I said, we discussed before you're in it. Yeah. But this is an opportunity. If you, if you can kind of open it up, you kind of wrapped up your part focus is kind of stewed down a little bit and someone's telling you, Hey man, I enjoyed your video part last year. Stoked to see this one. And that's nice. It's, it's cool. It was always nice and refreshing and, um, reassuring to know that people were paying attention and totally. still moving the needle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. I remember very early on Devin Walsh coming into the shop and having coming off maybe yeah i don't even know what part i don't know when this was but he basically was like fuck this job is hard man yeah like last year we had an epic snow season and we traveled around all these places and lots of places had good snow and you know this year it's shitting the bed how am i supposed to make a part that's better than last year's on a snow year where there's just no snow anywhere yeah it's it's High stress, not a big window. Yeah. If you care about, I mean, the stress really is kind of put on yourself. I mean, the videos want it, sponsors want it for sure. But right. In in reality, we all loaded ourselves with that on our own. You know, we really did. That that's a huge insight for yeah. sure. And you just put it on, however you put it on. Some it was crazy. Some was just nah, just whatever. I'm cruising. Yeah. Yeah. I'll totally. get what I get. And but that's, that's the job is just, that's, that's the part that defines the, the one that's all in and the one that's not. Yeah. And they have their role, right? They each have their role if they're still there and right. As long as they play, it works. Right. Like Craig Kelly, the legend of Craig Kelly, um, making sure that everybody involved in a photo shoot was taking soul laps. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's that balance you're talking about like somebody who knows the game can direct a photographer like no 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 shoot this little thing from over here at this angle and with that in the background it's probably going to be pretty sick yeah to the guy that's like all right this is all just being posers if we don't actually go take some legitimate laps right now if we don't totally. go oh right, if, right yeah yeah, yeah if we don't the spin yeah, yeah 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 like we we flew all the way here from america to ride these mountains and we're shooting little tiny, you know, shots over here. Yeah. Let's go get some real shit. Yeah. Soul lap, party yeah. runs. Yeah. Yep. All those, they're important. Was That's there it. ever a trip where the whole Forum 8 was riding, like, just for fun? Like, riding around, having fun with a bunch of people? Or No. Not like, that I remember. That would have been sick. That's a, that's a challenge industry. Get You get your... Because I've... With Jake passing, there was a lot of gatherings of, you know, like tons of the Burton team. Yeah. And yeah. riding all together. But then, yeah, it's the same thing. It was kind of a crappy, icy day. Yeah. It's, I can't imagine what it would be like to have the kind of resources and time to get a, 10 of your friends together for like the best day of your life. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, man. It's, 
That's I mean, cool. those can happen pretty good up at Bald Face. I'd say it's, there's a price tag to that, but man, new new goal. Yeah. I will say that's a worth it price tag if you ever want to drop because that's an experience and do that with some friends. Yeah, man, that that's like the that's something else. It's pretty unique. Yeah, that's full on. It is. It's cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, Jeremy. You. It's been great. Thanks for having me in here. Your yeah, thanks is, for your time. It's dope. There's a lot of cool shit thanks. on the walls. Is yeah, that the my... board that you broke your legs on? Yeah, that's the broken board. That scares me. Just <laughs> seeing it, I was like... Ugh. Yeah, I just kind of left it as is, and I do some speaking, and I'll kind of bring that and have that be on the on the stage, and then got the forum spread up there for Mathis photos. True life here. I like it's that. Gorgeous. Little yeah. Trevor Andrew art there on that North Face puffy too. <laughs> I <laughs> Big love fan it. of Trev, so yeah, yeah, he's dope. I like it. I like my. I like you know reminding myself I'm a snowboarder. It's easy to forget <laughs> when you're just on the grind. Sometimes. Oh, I hear you, man. Totally. <laughs> so I'm a boarder, and I love it. Sick, dude. Effin' Rad shoutouts this week to Jeremy Jones and the team of trainers at The Sect where we recorded this interview. Thanks for turning the music off, guys, and thanks to Jeremy for really bringing it. Shout out to Alex Grandmason, a listener who reached out on Instagram. Always stoked to hear from you guys. Alex is getting some good snow this year up at CMH Monashies. Happy birthday to Crystal from Intuition Liners. She's one of those people that's always helping people out. And her big birthday party on Saturday was a fucking blast. Awesome, you guys. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of the Effenrad Snowboard Podcast presented by Vans and brought to you by SIA Productions.